Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com and the point of this video is to start is to show you how to think about your data. I find like sometimes just setting up a Google Sheet like this and just writing out spreadsheets that kind of help me just sort of think through what is my data can help um, oftentimes help illustrate sort of how I should set that up before I work with a database like Mongo or Postgres or, or something like that. Because again, if you spend the time to plan whenever you're building an application, whether it's planning how you're going to structure your data in your database, how your UI is going to be structured, you're going to end up building a better application. Um, and just coming up with different exercises you can use to kind of help do that planning can be very beneficial. And if you do hear some birds in the background, you, uh, I have cocktails. So just so you know. So let's pretend I have... Okay, so again, generally when you think about your data, you want to think about columns as your fields and your rows as your records. And even though you may have unstructured, you may be using an unstructured database like a MongoDB, a document database where that sort of column and rows may not perfectly apply, it's still not a bad way to start thinking about things. So I may be thinking, okay, I have a list of people and they all have a name. Okay, and in this list of people, has a list of um, dogs that they may have adopted. Okay, so I start listing all the people who have adopted dogs. So I'm like, okay, here, Alex has adopted Spot. Steve has adopted Ruff. Oh, Alex also adopted, uh, you know, um, Bongo. Okay, Susie has adopted, um, you know, uh, Pongo. Okay, I'm running out of names. Um, Dave has adopted um, Biff. Susie also adopted um Uh, also adopted, uh, also adopted, uh, Ruff along with Steve because they're, they're, they are sharing custody of, of Ruff. Okay. So in this case, what happens here is that the relationship that I see with name, I have two data sets, name and dogs. Um, I could just put it like this. Now the problem with this is like, notice I'm, if I look at this column, I'm repeating myself multiple times. So what happens if Al I change my name? I'm no, I go by, uh, Alan. I would have to change both these records. Same thing with Susie. Same thing here. I can see that rough is duplicated. So generally having everything in sort of one model, one sort of spreadsheet is not necessarily the greatest idea. You want to eliminate the duplicate data. Okay. So we'll, we'll break that down in a second. Okay. So we'll call this, we'll call this sheet, you know, uh, people dogs. But I notice that I have people data that gets replicated and I have dog data that gets replicated. So what I'd like to do is limit that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new spreadsheet and this would be the equivalent of creating a new collection in Mongo or a new table in a SQL database. Um, I'm gonna create another one that's called uh, dog. Okay, and here we can list all the dogs. Okay, and then every dog has an ID and the name. Okay, so what I can do is I'll go back over here. I'll copy the list of dogs. Okay, and take get rid of any duplicates. So rough is a duplicate, so we can get rid of this. And I can go one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so now each dog only gets listed once and they all have a unique number. And instead of using the name, I can use a number. So like spot is one. And this is referred to as a foreign key. The idea is that this ID number is referring to the ID of something somewhere else. Okay, so this concept of a foreign key. So with that, actually, let's add a primary key on this table. Column to the left. So in the context of people dogs, this is a foreign key that, that that refers to the dog's table. In the dog's table, this is the primary key of each dog. So whether something is a primary or foreign key is always relative to the to the set of data that you're currently on. So keep that in mind. 
Okay, so let's basically plug in all these foreign keys here on people dog. So rough is two. So everywhere I see rough, I can put two. And then anywhere I see bongo is three. That should really be just four or five. Okay, so there's. And then again, each of these entries also gets their own ID. So basically, it'd be like ID. One, two, three, four, five, six. And again, these each of, each of these is the unique ID of that entry on people and dogs. Okay. And notice, I didn't give any kind of relationship names yet because I'm building up to this whole idea. You'll see, we'll, I'll mention the whole word many to many. Okay. And But the thing is, I see, like, again, I see people repeating themselves too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another one of these, but for people. Okay, so then I say, okay, people. And then in this case, now I'm gonna go copy over the names of the people. Okay, well, Alex is duplicated. So let's cut that and put that here. Okay, Susie's duplicated. So we really only have four people. Okay, and now I can go back and then replace anywhere I see Alex with one. Okay, Steve is gonna end up being two, Susie will end up being three, and four. Okay, so now what happens is that I can tell, like, okay, so this becomes a table listing every sort of pairing of dogs with people. So I know in this particular pairing that whoever is the ID person with the ID of one has been adopted the dog with the ID of one. So I know that Alex has adopted Spot. But the beauty is, I don't, if, let's say, like, for example, Alex changes his name, I just change the name in this table, and I don't have to update multiple entries in the people dogs table. Now, this particular setup is referred to as a many-to-many -many relationship. That's why we have to use a third table, okay, um, because the third, this third table illustrates all the possible combinations, because a, a person can have many dogs, and a dogs can have many people. Let's just call this a person. Okay, so that's called the many-to-many -many relationship. But let's say a dog could only be adopted by one person, then I would have probably housed the foreign key here, and that would have been what's called a one-to-many relationship. Now, if it was only one-to-one, -one, meaning every dog gets one person and every person can only have one dog, then I wouldn't even break them up. I would leave them on the same table because there's only no data is going to get repeated because it's only like one-to-one. -one. So that's kind of how you have to think about your data. Again, whenever you structure it, with, it doesn't matter what type of database it is. You're just trying to think about how to reduce the redundancy in your data. That's generally like sit there and like list everything out and then start looking at where you start seeing like where you can imagine duplicate data. And then that tells you, okay, I need another table. I need another model. I need another collection uh, and so forth. And what the kind of those relationships are. Okay, so based on like, is it can... Like in this case, again, a person can have many dogs. So this person, so since they both can appear multiple times, I went and made this a foreign key field. Okay. And then since I have multiple persons that could show up multiple times in this table, I made a... So again, start off with like a master sheet and then start going through the data. And again, every time you see a, a column that can have multiple repetition of the same piece of data, then let's go create a new model until basically there is no duplicate data. Um, there is no redundancy on this master table. And um, yeah, that should be a good approach in thinking sort of like how your data should relate to each other. Um, and again, basically, again, these are the IDs, which could be like underscore ID if you're talking about Mongo or whatnot, but just again, the way you, you track the thing. So in this case, this model is not tracking the actual person and dog data, it's just tra tracking the IDs but then I can use those ideas to then query these tables, which if you're using SQL is very easy because you can use like a join and then it'll just put those tables together. If you're using like a Mongo database, if you're using like an ODM like Mongoose, they have some object ID ways of, of kind of automating that. But point is, you know, your data is organized, you reduce redundancy, and it's going to also be easier to kind of think through and look through your data. So 
My name is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com. Have a great day and enjoy.